Hey, what's up guys? It's Dr. D Flow, and today we're gonna build another Open Builds Plasma table, and I'm gonna take you along for the ride. Are you already opening up boxes over here, Andy? I am, we've only got a couple days to get this done. So, I'm not actually building myself a second plasma table, but instead, this table is gonna be a unique collaboration between Open Builds, HTP, and the Dr. D Flow channel, where I'm gonna put this table together, and we're gonna deliver it to the guys over at Faster Proms. Now, if you've never heard of Faster Proms, they're basically these cool YouTubers that make these souped up cars, and they're gonna use the plasma table to make components for some of their upcoming uh, conversions and builds. So, super excited to get this opportunity to collaborate with them the YouTube channel, and of course, my new favorite thing is plasma cutting. So, it's, it's all wrapped up into one great bundle. But, as Andy said, we don't have much time. We need to put this whole table together uh, in a little under a week and then we got to drive it down to Tampa and I'm going to train the, the guys how to run the table um, And how to maintain it So this is going to be a quick whistle build um, but there will be some differences between My beta version of the open build plasma table and this new version and I'm super excited to walk you guys through that But I will wait to do that. I will wait to do that until after it's already built the Dr. D Flow and Andy Vlog. So I got too excited to wait until the end. You can already start to see some of the differences between my current plasma cutter and this new iteration, and I wanna walk you through a couple of those. If you're familiar with the Open Builds ecosystem, then you'll notice that these plates have a geometry that's never been seen before on the Open Builds website. And I'm super excited to show you where they're gonna go in the build. Also, the red's a really nice touch. I also appreciate that the team already assembled some of these carriages. That's going to save us a lot of time when we're putting this together. Yes, of course. That's awesome. It also seems like this build is more purpose built for plasma cutting. Instead of having the 3D print a torch holder, they provided these aluminum clamps which will hold the torch. That's awesome. And we also have these slat holders that will attach right to the aluminum extrusion. Let's keep building. So everything's coming together really well. And perhaps the first thing you noticed is that this table is bigger than my other table. It's a meter and a half in the X direction and one meter in the Y direction. Now the reason for a slightly larger table is that with this size table, you can load on 48 inch sheets. So for fab work, which is what these guys are gonna do, this is a much better size table. Now one thing I wanna point out is that Open Builds has these new plates, which will just go right into the bottom of these uh, 40 by 40, and a caster will thread right in. Pretty sweet, so I'm gonna put the casters on, I'm gonna put the table over, and then we can start working on the linear actuators, which is always my favorite part, because if you take the time with that, you're gonna get some really precise, accurate movements. Couple more things I wanna show you as I continue to make a lot of progress with this build. I just finished up the Y linear actuators which are on either side. I'm partially done with the X axis. I just have the carriage and the rail on there right now. But I need to come back and add the motor and lead screw. But let me point out two things here. First off, this is the first open builds design that has incorporated the linear actuators directly into the frame. Now this frame is super rigid because it has to support the water table, the slats, and the metal that's going to be cut. 
So the actuators get to take advantage of this rigidity by being directly tied into the frame. They're not just sitting on top of the frame. The second thing I wanted to show you is that this system is rocking OpenBuild's tensioning mechanism. Now, I'm not gonna go into too much detail about this. You can go to the OpenBuild's website for more information. But basically what it's gonna do is it's gonna pull that lead screw tight so that it's no longer whipping. And whipping is really a concern at longer lengths of lead screws, especially when your lead screw is going to be 1,500 millimeters long. This is the longest lead screw I've ever seen. So that tensioning system is gonna be imperative for accurate movements and minimizing that whipping action. So I'm going to finish the x-axis and add on the Z, and then it's just wiring. Almost done. I don't know if you can see the clock up there, but it is 10.16 the night before we have to deliver this plasma table. So yes, we're cutting it close, but it's all done. It's all buttoned up. It's looking great. The last thing I want to talk to you guys about is the actual table. Now, this is kind of a funky design with the water table on the left and the dry slats on the right. Up until about the last minute, I was going back and forth with the Open Builds guys on what size table would be best for faster prods. We ended up with that larger table so that they could eventually cut those 48 inch sheets. But I didn't have enough time to get a large enough water pan fabricated. So now we have this kind of dual setup where you can cut mild steel over the water on the left and you can cut aluminum dry on the right and not have to worry about hydrogen gas. I do owe one big final thanks to HCP who included me in this collaboration. They could have bought a prefabricated table, uh, but they trusted me to put together a table that will make their plasma cutter shine. And speaking of making their plasma cutter shine, I will have a video coming up soon of this exact cutter slicing through some aluminum. So get subscribed for that. Let's go ahead and throw on a piece of mild steel. And I'm not gonna put any water in the, in the table just because I don't want to, to empty it right before we go. So we're just gonna cut this on the dry spot. So it's delivery day and I've never really delivered anything. The plan right now is to wrap all the slats in some plastic wrap and then I guess wrap the whole machine in said plastic wrap. We'll see how it goes. Not gonna lie, my fingers are hurting from inside this tube. <laughs> We're not giving you much room to walk, are we? Nope. I can move this stuff. So here's the table, here's the trailer. There should be a couple inches of clearance along the width. So hopefully it's an oddly satisfying fit, not an oddly frustrating fit. Man, the time is always our enemy. We got like a 10 hour drive, we lose an hour. Oh, we're gonna be there at midnight. <laughs> if I look a little tired in the videos, you'll know why. yourself in there. Good call. I don't know. We'll see. How are you going to get out? What are you doing in there? I'm forever trapped. Good thing I'm skinny. 
I went with a larger trailer so I could get out. <laughs> and we're we're buckled in. Plasma cutter secure. Hopefully. <laughs> and we're off. Gotta love Tennessee. Look how beautiful our drive is. Despite some traffic. So we made it to Tampa safely. We're gonna open up the back of the trailer tomorrow, so hold tight. This is Dr. D Flow from the future. It was a busy afternoon setting up the table and walking Jeremy through the different software needed to run the plasma cutter. I didn't have time to address the camera, but Andy did a great job filming, so I wanted to narrate over some of the clips. Fortunately, the plasma table survived the trip down from Nashville, and it was ready to run as soon as we pulled the plastic wrap off of it. I gave Jeremy a quick rundown of how to convert 3D models and drawings into CNC toolpaths. I still need to fine tune my explanations because as I reviewed some of the footage, I oversimplified a couple concepts. But hey, I'm still learning too. Speaking of learning, it was cool to see behind the scenes of a channel the size of Faster Proms. Jeremy was professional both on and off camera. He always asked the right questions and was able to string the answers together into a narrative that would be interesting for the viewer. I was jotting down some notes to hopefully improve my own content. We ended the day with some pristine plasma cutting of both mild steel and aluminum. Peter Zelo from HCP explained to Jeremy how to get optimal cut quality through using dry air, having the torch at the perfect distance from the material, and cutting at the correct speed. I've covered these topics in past videos, but I learned a couple new tricks that I will share with you in my upcoming plasma cutting video on aluminum. Peter had the Microcut 875SC cutting perfectly. The edge on the aluminum part had very little dross and was sharp with a minimal oxide layer. All in all, this was a great opportunity for the Dr. D Flow channel, and I can't thank HTP and Open Builds enough. I will put some product links in the description below if you're interested in HTP's Microcut 875SC plasma cutter or Open Builds linear rails and actuators. Let me know in the comments down below if you like this less formal Dr. D Flow content. I can upload more frequently if I mix in this run and gun content with my detailed guides. I will catch you guys in the next one.